Good morning, and welcome to Wabash Avenue Presbyterian Church this Sunday morning. We welcome our members and visitors and friends. We welcome the folks who are watching online. Uh, we are thankful that you are part of this worship experience, and I am thankful that you're going to hear a good sermon for a change today. The, uh, our Lake Fellow in Parish Ministry, Reverend Kelly Spencer, is here. And I'm excited because her spouse, Katie, is here. So Katie, we're a small church, so you raise your hand so we can all, after the service, so we can love on you. So we are so thankful that you're both here. You braved the rain, deluge coming over from Indy. And, and all of you who are here, if you really did something really big in my little country church, people would say something like this. You have earned an extra star for your heavenly crown. So we know it's not about works righteousness, but <laughs> those of you who braved the weather today, what a yucky day. But we're glad that you're here. We're glad that you're also with us online. The Holy Spirit is in the house, and let us trust that God has something to say to us in this next period of time. So let us now prepare our hearts to come before the Lord in worship. I, too, am getting used to our abbreviated worship order. Please join me in our call to worship, which comes from Psalm 98. Sing to our God a new song. God has done marvelous things. Make a joyful noise to the Lord. Break forth into joyous song and sing praises. Let the sea roar and all that fills it. Let the world and its people sing together for joy. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. In humility and faith, let us confess our sins to God. Please join me in our prayer of confession. Loving God, we have not loved you or each other with our whole hearts. Forgive us, we pray, and lead us toward wholeness that we may be filled with your joy. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. 
Hear the good news. The mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting. May the God of mercy who forgives you all your sins strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit keep you in eternal life. Friends, believe the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Let us join together in our prayer for illumination. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon us, O God, in the reading of your word, that we would hear what you have to say to us today. May your Holy Spirit be poured out upon us through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Good morning. Let us hear the words from the Gospel of John, chapter 15. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my Father. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And I have appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. Friends, this is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. I have to say it's a joy this morning to see the faces to whom I am preaching. My experience thus far in the last few months here at Wabash Avenue has been uh, reflections of car windows. Uh, So it is great to be here with all of you on this Mother's Day. Anna Sale wrote an article last week in the New York Times. As someone who regularly engages conversations about money and hard things, she wrote a piece discussing how we are all relearning how to talk to one another, and that this isn't just because of the pandemic. I certainly resonate this, with this reality this morning, as this is my first time seeing you as I can preach here at Wabash. Anna Sale is right that the scale of the work that's needed is overwhelming, and it's increasingly on individuals to rebuild our connections on our own. So weaving through beautiful personal stories, Sale suggests at the end of her piece that we really only get better at this by doing it. Try and try again, fail and fail again. This is how we learn. This is poignantly seen through important nouns in our lives that are only realized when we perform the verb. So you become the noun by doing the verb. 
when you mother a child, a relationship is formed, and you become a mother. This one sticks out to me on this Mother's Day, because today we celebrate our biological mothers, yes. But today we also celebrate all of the incredible maternal figures in our lives as well. We all have aunts or teachers or babysitters or ladies at church who have brought us up with care and affection, looked after us kindly and protectively. Mothers in our lives get recognized today, not simply for their title, but for their impact, for their encouragement, for safety, and for love. And I can't help but think this become the noun by doing the verb kind of celebration is so much deeper than we give it credit for. I think of how we become friends by befriending. I think of how you strengthen neighborhoods by neighboring. How we become helpers by helping. How we become allies by allying with those in need. How we become followers of Jesus Christ by following Jesus Christ. What if we lived into the action and not just the noun? What if this is the kind of transformation Jesus is trying to instill in us? The noun Jesus uses here to refer to his disciples is notable. When this Greek word for friend is used elsewhere in the Gospels, it's normally one of those hypothetical Jesus parables. Imagine you have a friend who's walking down a road. The only two times that it appears in the Gospels not in a hypothetical situation is here in John 15 and in Matthew chapter 11. The Matthew passage puts us in the middle of a debate about John the Baptist. Jesus points out it doesn't matter what these prophetic people in our lives do, whether they eat or drink or don't eat or don't drink, the crowds don't believe them. For John came neither eating or drinking, and they say, look, he has a demon. And the Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. And then get this, the section ends with, yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. So wisdom and truth and understanding is proven by our action. Pretty cool, right? So my nerdy tangent aside, Jesus calls us friends because he believes that we can live into the action required of us. Jesus uses nouns to inspire verbs. I like to think of the way my mother has always told me, you can do anything you put your mind to. It's her way of saying, you are an achiever. So get out there and start making a difference. Mothers tend to have that same spirit-inspired way of speaking the truth into being. However, the fact that the Bible repeats these same commandments over and over again suggests that maybe it's not as easy as we might hope. At some point, we have to ask ourselves, how many different ways can we say, love one another, before it sticks? Our passage this morning reminds us that we are still a work in progress. Loving one another looks like abiding with God. It looks like bearing fruit and sharing joy. And it also looks like sacrifice. These are actions that define our lives. These are verbs that make us into nouns. 
commentator Emily Askew notes that love in this passage is not a psychological state, nor is it anywhere described as just an internal quality. Love is an action, a really difficult action. And the definition of love here is a radical willingness to die, not just for your child or your spouse, but for any fellow follower of Christ. That's a really difficult action. I had one friend this week who really put it into perspective, maybe something tangible that we can all encounter in our everyday lives. He said, I wonder what would happen, what would the church look like if its distinctive sign would have been a towel and basin rather than the cross and an empty tomb? Instead of redemptive suffering, which has justified so much bloodshed throughout the idea of Christus Victor, from the Crusades to the conquest, the Holocaust, instead we would just have love, the giving of oneself to another. If you're like me right now, you're probably terrified. This is a huge call a significant ask, an impossible hurdle. We will never truly love one another as God loves us. We live in a state of total depravity as broken and sinful people who our innate instincts just keep us from our Creator. But there is good news just as this phrase initially it frames this whole section for our text today. Just as the Father has loved me, just as I have loved you, just as is a key motif that appears 31 times in John's Gospel. And it's important for John's theology for what it reveals about the mutual relationship of the divine and the disciple community. Just as the Father has loved, so the Son loves. The Son's love imitates and mirrors the Father's love. And the Son can love because the Father taught him how to do it. This son's deep love in giving his life for his friends is no accident. But it stems just so from the way that father has loved the son. Therefore, to abide in the son's love is to pass on the love that God has passed on to Jesus, who has passed it on to us. My grandmother taught my mother to never stand by when there are dishes to be done or tables to be set, no matter whose kitchen she's in. My mother has taught this lesson to me, and I plan to teach it to my children one day as well. Friends, just when the title becomes too heavy to bear, I hold fast to Jesus' words to us. I chose you. I chose you. Jesus knows everything about us, even the things we try to hide from ourselves. And he chose us. He chose us as friends, as prayer partners, as instruments of the divine kingdom. And in his choosing, we are free. We're free to do the work We're free to be open, to be radical, to be courageous. Free to love one another as we have been loved. And in the verb, in radically loving, we become the noun of friends and followers of Christ, just as we have been called. Thanks be to God.
Amen. Let us now stand as we are able and affirm our faith using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. And let us pray. Holy God, we thank you for this day. I thank you for these fellow friends who you have called. And we thank you, Lord, for the calling you have given us to not waste our lives on anything less than love, even when it is hard. And we pray, Lord, that you will help us to become more verb-like, that you will help us to put our noun faith into verb action and be your hands and feet and heart in this world. We think of all the women who have blessed us with their maternal care and love, and we thank you, Lord, for their example and for their compassion and their interest in us. Help us to honor and bless them and to pass on their gift. We pray for all who are grieving for their mothers this Mother's Day with special prayers for Jim Heinzman and family and Becky and David Barnett and family. We pray for those who are in need of healing, asking your grace for all who are ill and who are quarantining due to the coronavirus. Continue to pour out your healing blessings, we pray, on Deb and Noreen and on Noreen's friend Patricia. Bless Debbie. Be with Jim and Becky. Becky, Lord, prays for transplant possibilities to open up. And we ask, Lord, for that miracle on her behalf. We pray for Susan's friend, Jan. We pray for Don and Jane, for Roger, for Kay. We ask your blessings upon Stephanie, Carrie, and Marty. Be with Bill and Linda. Bless Jim and continue to heal him. We give you thanks, Lord, that Maddie is healing. We pray for the other person in the car, and we pray for the driver who struck them. We ask, Lord, that you would continue to help them to heal and bless their families. Be with Peg, be with Barb, and we ask your grace for all who are grieving. Lord, we give you thanks for our friend Betty Barnett. She sang in the choir for so many years, helped with the bazaar, had a ready smile, was a good friend, we thank you, Lord, for all the good things in her life that she shared with us. And we're thankful, Lord, that for her pain and suffering are past and that she is now alive and whole in your life and love forever. Be with her family. Continue to be with Jim's family. They had their funeral for Darlene this week. Bless as well, we pray, the family of Helen Milligan, our friend, and Arlene Painter, and Betty Showalter, and we ask, Lord, your grace for Hillary Bates and Ann Sexton and their family. Hillary's grandfather, Lloyd, passed away on Friday. We ask your grace for those who are in transition. We pray for Kevin and Laura. Be with Susan's mother, Patricia. And Lord, be with the congregations of Sunnyside and Rockville Presbyterian churches as their church closes. We ask, Lord, your grace for all who serve to protect us during this pandemic. Be with all teachers and students and school staff. And Lord, we give you thanks for a daughter of this congregation, Jenna Plemons, her achievement of being inducted into the National Honor Society. We pray that you will prosper, bless, guide all the children and youth of this congregation, guiding them to become who you created them to be. 
Lord, we give you thanks for Kelly and Katie. We ask a blessing upon their marriage, their house, and their future. And Lord, we would offer unto you these our silent prayers. Oh Lord, we thank you for receiving our prayers and for receiving us as your forgiven, redeemed, and loved children. Unite us now in one voice in the prayer that our Savior taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We can rest assured this week and every week that we have been chosen and therefore we can perform the actions we have been called to for the sake of the gospel. As you go this week, may you know that Christ goes before you to plan and prepare your way. The Holy Spirit walks beside you as friend and companion for the journey and the God of justice is above you, calling and reconciling your life now and forevermore. Amen. We're going to change up our exit strategy a little bit, and from here, here forward, uh, Session thinks that uh, you all are certainly smart enough to do this, so we will individually dismiss ourselves from this Sunday and on out by the back rows and then moving forward. And uh, just for today, if it's all right with you, we will not have our courtyard song. We'll save that for next Sunday. So I trust that that is a good, good thing. So anyway, thank you all so much. Kelly and I will exit first uh, so you can say hello to her in the uh, Thompson room. Mm -hmm.